Hi everyone and welcome back uh, to the Floss Marketing School. In this video, we are going to see how you can track an information portal with uh, Matomo Analytics. So uh, first, uh, let's uh, define what is an information portal. This is what I define as an information portal. It's a portal on which uh, you have uh, different uh, content information. So as the content that you can see over here, so as the search engine over here, such as a carousel here, such as a menu, uh, over here and of course for every uh, piece of information you get uh, information okay so this is what i qualify as um, an information portal so in order to create one just for testing on a wordpress you can install this given theme which is for free the royal news uh, light and in fact the issue that you're gonna face is that you don't have any content at all so you can install this given plugin named the post uh, generator plugin it's a free plugin as well uh, which allows you to create a random post on the fly and as a result you get a website with a lot of content with it so that's the first part and the second part is about uh, the two kind of portal that you may have to manage for profit information portal and non-profit information portal if you deal with the first case which is a for-profit uh, information portal uh, most of the time the kind of thing that you will have to measure are uh, how much money you are going to make with it and the money is in fact coming from uh, the clicks which are made on advertising banners such as this one uh, so in fact there are two methods either uh, you are using a third party services and in this case that probably not be within Matomo that you will check uh, the performances in terms of revenue of the banner because the information is primarily collected on the third party uh, platform so you will probably go on the third party platform um, and uh, if you have actually a nice a API provided by the third party platform you may actually connect it to uh, Matomo create a specific plugin it requires of course of development in order to inject those data uh, within Matomo just to let you know that so far uh, there's no ad uh, banner plugin um, within Matomo telling you how much revenues you make on a given uh, third party platform. The second method is if uh, you are the one inserting the banner on uh, your website and you have full control over it, then in this case uh, that's probably some goals that you're going to define within Matomo. So it's going to be uh, very simple. You just go over here, you just go click and click here on goal. Uh, you just say like uh, money, okay, money. Um, then it's uh, when someone's it's a it's a manual goal that we want to define it's every time someone's going to click um on the on the ad and uh, we're going to see how this ad is named so that's the one okay we're just going to inspect the element and see what's the name given to the banner here you can see that this banner has a class uh, which is the image banner is entering okay um Okay, so that could be enough. Um, I think it's even better to change a little bit your template in order to add the information that this is an ad. So this is what we need. Okay, um, click on a, an element which has a class which equal WP image banner. Okay, uh, let's go with this. So we're gonna go over here. So this is the goal for our banner and uh, goal revenue. You are the one who's gonna define it. You can even use a variable for this. So let's imagine that the revenue that you get out of it is zero. 0 point something, 0 0.2 cents, whoops, 0 0.2 cents, yep, so we go for this one, okay, and uh, we validate the goal. Uh, so next step is just to go within the tag manager and to define it as a goal, so just go over here and just say, okay, that's the um, revenue, add revenue, so add revenue, add revenue, uh, it's going to be a goal, that's the first one that I created and it's going to be fired every time someone's going to click on an element of the page and this element as we just saw, um, click banner, click add banner, add banner it's when there is a class and this class yep, equals to this one, okay, so uh, this is, this should be fine, so I just create it and then you can either decide to publish or either to put it in a preview and debug mode so we're gonna go and the clean way and we're gonna do it with the preview mode so we go for this one okay we got this one and then we go back uh, on the page on which we had the given banner which is this one and we just append it at the end of the banner so we just clear the cache and then uh, we have it so if i go down and if i click here on banner i get my all element clicks with the ad revenue banner and as a result if i look back on my 
Um, if I look back here, as you can see, I get the money revenue uh, 20 cents. So that's if you have an, uh, a for-profit uh, website. Um, if you have a non-profit information portal, then um, your concern is about, okay, do people are in fact watching my uh, information content and are they reading it fine? So you have several ways that you can uh, measure it. I think that one nice way could be uh, if someone is going to reach 75% of your page and then you consider that the content has been read. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm just going to go over uh, here within the tag management so the, um, over here. So I need to define it as a goal, a manage goal. And so you can say, okay, information has been given. Information has been given or read. It's read or given. Okay, uh, it's when, so it's in manual goal again. Um, and uh, can it be converted more than once? Yes, because someone can have a look at different um, different uh, content. So there's no revenue here involved. And uh, what I need now as a tag, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna remove this one, I don't need it anymore. Uh, okay, I'll just create a new tag and this tag's gonna be, again, it's gonna be, uh, uh, information given, goal, information given. Okay, I'm at more configuration, it's a manual goal, so I go over here, manual goal, goal ID number two, and uh, the trigger is, actually, I think I already defined it before, it's when someone's gonna scroll and reach 75% uh, of the page. Uh, not though that this may have to be a little bit more uh, filtered because um, what's going to happen is that if they go on the home page and that kind of thing, you don't want it to be measured. So you probably uh, want to add uh, something which uh, let you know that the people are uh, currently looking at the, at the post. Okay, uh, there are several ways that you can do it. In my case, I'm just going to say okay every time that it contains 2020, which is not really, um, which is not better but i think you could definitely push an information to matomo in order to say okay every time that's the post i want it to be uh, measured in my case i'm going to do it this way like uh, playing with this 2020 information indicating that uh, this is a uh, this is a post because the post always always have uh, a folder with so which contains which contain 2020 okay a date and uh, I'm going to do exactly the same thing as before. So we're going to stay within the preview mode, which will include what we're currently showing here. And uh, do I have my preview mode here? I don't have it, but I have it back here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go on this given page and I'm going to scroll down up to 75% of the page. Okay, that's a long page. Okay, I got my scroll reach. I look my scroll reach and I see that the goal information given has been has been sent. Uh, I can even double check that it's gonna not work on the, uh, not gonna work on the portal page by just taking the preview mode again and just put it on the preview on the home page. So like this. Okay, so here if I scroll down the 75%, I look, but no tags are fired, which correspond exactly to the behavior that I that I wanted, wonderful. Uh, so if I go back over here, I look through the visit log and I should see that uh, I get the information has been uh, given as a goal. So that's the second way you can track a website if it's dealing with an information portal. So in fact, defining goal is really the most important thing because uh, you will see that uh, tracking an information portal, you have many, many different things that you can track, but just uh, stay focused on the most important thing, which are your goals. Uh, then. Uh, out of uh, the needs of tracking goals, what are the other tracking methods that you may be interested in implementing and what are the ones which are the mostly asked? Um, they are about how many clicks I'm receiving on links, about the site search, about carousel performances, about pushing categories of content. So we're going to go through all of those. Um, so the main concern uh, that people may have on portal is about where people are clicking. So if you would like to know where people are clicking, you cannot really get this information by default in Matomo uh, unless you use the page overlay. So I'm going to go back to this point uh, before. But uh, if you are interested in knowing exactly where do they click in terms of links or in terms of element and what is the CTR, for example. So uh, just to let you know, the rates in Matomo are quite few. So uh, content tracking is one way to get 
um, to get the um, to get the, the CTR to get a rate, so it's an interesting one. It calls back to this uh, given method that you can see uh, over here, which consists of deploying, in fact, um, one given line of code. And this uh, given line of code, in fact, is saying that, okay, I want to track every piece of content which have uh, the following HTML element included within the attribute of the element, or I want to track every time that a content has been uh, visible on the page, which is containing those HTML element. Okay, so uh, let's um, let's go for it. So let's imagine here that you would like to track this given information. You see that uh, this is a carousel. Uh, so this carousel is in fact changing at a given uh, frequency. If you would like to track this given carousel, it requires uh, some development skills. So you will need to know well uh, your, your website. So in my case here, it's a WordPress website. Um, the template that I'm using is the one that I showed you before, and it's kind of understandable, okay? It's not like uh, uh, super easy, but it's not neither uh, super hard. Um, so what I did is I investigated a little bit more within it, and what I found out is, and I hope, I'm going to show it to you. Uh, no, that was not uh, the header. That was probably the, uh, maybe this one. No, neither this one. So maybe this one. Yep. And, um, okay. Not this one neither. Ten header archive uh, functions. And, uh, mm -mm -mm. Okay, we got it. Okay, you see that? So uh, this given part, um, so I added in fact the data track content, data content name and data content piece, which are in fact required by Matomo in order to track that the content has been viewed. So in fact, what you need to do is just you need to inspect the element and see in fact the different tags which are here in order to find out within your template or within your PHP files where those uh, HTML tag are declared and then uh, when uh, you know where they are declared, you can in fact uh, start to implement uh, your tracker directly within the source code. I strongly advise you to go for this method rather than uh, just using pure JavaScript in order to rewrite your tags because it may break at any time. Um, and here, as you can see, I just insert the data track contact, data content name, carousel, so this is me who hard coded it. But then for uh, the data content piece, as I wanted the data to be uh, dynamically filled in with the value corresponding to the announce of the content. So for example, here, the announce is, oops, let me delete this. Okay, so for example, here, this is the content I'm talking about, okay? And in order to measure this, I did it to be uh, sent dynamically. So in WordPress, uh, at least for this template, it will be a PHP, the title, and blah, 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 and which will insert it uh, automatically. So in fact, thanks to this method, uh, what's going to happen is that every time that the page is loaded, as you can see um, here, yeah, here it's interesting to see that, oops, seven content on page. So where is my carousel? Um, I'm going to go back on it. I'm just going to refresh this page. Um, on page, hello world. So those are the on page content, not the carousel in itself. Um, so I got the carousel here, down below. Seems that there's kind of a bug uh, with the way that I implemented it because I had it before when I was using the method, which is only track all content operation. But when it's about uh, track just the visible one, seems that actually it's not uh, considering them. Um, so as you can see, uh, I have other, um, let's say, information which are visible, which are on page content, as you can see. And here is the name of the title. And in fact, it corresponds to those given data that you can see over here. Those data, right? the one which are here, uh, I did exactly the same method as the one that I showed you before, where I inserted, in fact, the data track content, data content name, data content piece, um, thanks to those PHP uh, function. So as you can see, uh, it's already a challenge because 
when I was inserting actually these given uh, trackers, it was working fine, but then by uh, tweaking a little bit the JavaScript tracking code of Matomo, it breaks, it works for this one, but doesn't work for this one anymore. Um, so it's always a challenge for you to look back within the source code and see uh, what's going on. So that's uh, what I wanted to show you regarding the content tracking part. So you need to add attribute to your HTML element in order for those given element to be afterwards uh, visible. And this is uh, how you will get. So in fact, if I click on those uh, given link, for example, this one, or if I click on, on this one, or I can even give it a try to click on this one. Uh, what you will see here in uh, Matomo, so so far it's telling you that the elements have been visible, but it's not telling you that people interacted with uh, those given elements. And here, as you can see, it's telling me that someone click on this uh, given link. So it's telling you uh, how people interacted with with those contents. And uh, once it's uh, finished, once the data are processed, those are the data that you're going to see here within the contents part. And you get, in fact, here the uh, information dealing with uh, which content was the most uh, clicked. Okay. Um, so that's about uh, the content tracking part. Um, then if you don't want to use this method because it's same kind of too techy for you as you need to put your hand within the code, you can use the page overlay. Uh, in my case, I can give it a new try to it, page overlay that's still uh, processing the data. Um, you can just go on demo.matomo.org. And if you go on demo.matomo.org, you will get a foretaste of what it looks like. So, okay, I'm gonna take the jobs page, job page. Okay, and just time for the data to be loaded. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay, that's great. Um, mm -hmm. Hold on, it's good. just gonna take, for example, this one. Wow, wonderful. Um, let's take uh, one week of data in the past. Okay, let's do exactly the, wow, I don't have enough data here. Just gonna pick up this one given day, which has been processed already. And uh, mm, okay, kind of fun, it's not even showing here. Oh, okay, it's finally showing. So here's how it looks like. Uh, you get the uh, percent rate of each click uh, down on, on every link. So it's giving you kind of a clear idea of how people are clicking on your page, but just to let you know that if two links are pointing to the same page, the same rate will be uh, attributed. So it's just interesting if you want to analyze the data about the fold. Uh, the other way that you can analyze your data is through the heat map. So let's see if I get uh, the heat map. So I try to generate one, but it seems that I don't have um, enough data. So you can get this uh, heat map example over here and know in fact where people are clicking uh, specifically within your information portal. So that's uh, what I wanted to show you. Next thing that you may be interesting to measure is the site search. So the site search, uh, just to let you know that by default, it will work on search query parameter if you have them. And uh, the only thing uh, you need to know, so let's imagine, for example, like in your case, it's okay. Uh, okay, someone just typed the following uh, query. Uh, so this parameter is by default supported by Matomo. So as far as you activate the site search tracking within the admin of Matomo, you will get this data within a Matomo. And once it's done, so here it looks like this. Okay, so you get the search. Uh, you will get those data within the site search uh, report, which is over here. And uh, like this, you can analyze your data. And most of my customers, uh, they are asking uh, for the information about, okay, what is the abandonment rate? And you cannot get it, but you can get the percent uh, search exits. And in order to display the percent search exit for all your website, all you need to do is to click over here and click on show total rows. And like this, you will get the average of all uh, your uh, search visits and it will give you an idea in fact uh, about your abandonment rate of your uh, of your search engine you will know if it's a good search engine or not um, next question so at least next point to consider is the carousel performances I already talked about this one um, and next um, 
point which is highly asked uh, well, on the Newton portal is about uh, how do you push uh, categories of contents. So to say, I have a page, so for example, this one, how do you push the information, uh, heads and categories, so it's probably not the, the best one, but how do you push uh, the, this one, this given category breaking news? Okay, how do you push this uh, category assigned to the content? So this pushing a category is very interesting because it can help you identify if it's a blog post, if it's a page or the name of the category. So there are two ways that you can push this information out to the system. Uh, you can either do the scrapping method. So scrapping method is just uh, like knowing in fact uh, what is the different attributes which are linked with this given value. So in my case here, um, as you can see, uh, it belongs to a class which is named catlinks. So in fact, the value of catlinks is breaking news. So what I can do in my tag manager, um, I can in fact create a variable. So that's what I did, uh, which is called span catlinks. So the value that it has is uh, the following one. So it's a CSS selector where you have the span, which corresponds to the name of the element, dot, which corresponds to the class, and catlinks correspond to the value of the class. So if I look back over here, as you can see, uh, the value that I'm trying to grab is breaking news. So that's why it's span dot, which corresponds to class, and then the value, which is catlinks. And as a result, it's grabbing the value breaking news. And now I need to explain to Matomo how do I want this data to be pushed to Matomo. And in my case, um, what I want to have is uh, what we call a custom dimension, because that's the way uh, data are normally pushed within Matomo when you have content. So I created an, uh, a custom dimension that I set at the action level. And then I just uh, went on the tag manager and within the tag manager, I just, uh, within my variable Matomo uh, configuration, I just set it uh, like this as a custom dimension span cat links. And uh, what's going to happen next is that every time that a page is loaded, which contain uh, this given um, custom dimension, well, you get it uh, within the category uh, page, which have been uh, created in my case um, before. So here you get the report created thanks to the creation of the custom dimension. As you can see, I get all those reports which are linked with the content that they are written for. And if I look back on the given content that I was having a look at some minutes ago, uh, which was this one, as you can see, uh, the custom dimension is coming through. Uh, it's written custom dimension category a call breaking news. So it will be pushed a little bit later within uh, the uh, report that we just saw. Um, another way that you can tackle this, because this method is called scrapping, which means that it's not kind of uh, very secure, let's say, because your template uh, may change from day one to day two and they may change. Uh, so your developer may change the class or even when the template will be updated, it may be, uh, it may work. Um, so in order to avoid this technique, what you can do is that you can push this data through the data layer. Uh, so for example, here I made some tests with the data layer. That's what you can see over here. So I did a data layer, so uh, script. Uh, which is going to request the database in order to get the data and send it uh, to uh, Matomo later on, or at least to be available for Matomo to be uh, grabbed. It's just that, as you can see, the value is not just breaking news here. It's like the full HTML code. And the reason is that uh, I don't know either PHP enough or either the template enough. And as a result, I use the wrong uh, I used the wrong function. So this is what I did on, uh, I think I did on single post or was it header? Just gonna look through it. Yeah, as you can see here, uh, this is where I put the uh, data layer. I'm using this given function, which is in fact grabbing more than just the categories itself. So that's why the final result doesn't look uh, uh, anything good. But uh, what I could have done is of course uh, to look more within the documentation of either WordPress or either the template in itself in order to know how can I just grab the category and then uh, thanks to the data layer just call this uh, given data. So it will be kind of simple here. Uh, I would just need to go here within the, the Matomo Tag Manager and we just need to pick up uh, the data layer variable, which is the following one, and just give the name category in order to grab it. And that's it uh, for today. So I really hope uh, that it gives you enough information in order for you to know how you can track an information portal, make your own sandbox, and having fun with Matomo Analytics. Thanks for watching.